moment I fell in love with cricket, I reckon I would have been five years old. I'm the product of two older siblings, so I got forced to bowl at my brother in the back garden. So, yeah, even though it was forced upon me, I fell in love with it so quickly. I, I just find it so, such a unique game, um, and I've always loved it. It's been a massive part of my life, childhood, growing up. So, yeah, I was very young when I fell in love with it. The cricketer that inspired me most when I was young was Andrew Flintoff. He, that 2005 Ashes, I remember sneaking into Old Trafford and he was just a character. And I love the fact that you can have fun and play cricket at the same time. So he was a massive influence on my journey and especially being from Lancashire. Um, but also, I have to say my brother, like I said, he was the guy that got me into cricket. He taught me how to bowl um, and I had endless, endless summers bowling at him in the back garden. So if I didn't say him, I think he'd be annoyed at me. The most important person in my cricketing career so far, I've got a few. Um, one of them would be John Stanworth. He was the academy director when I was 15 and he took a chance and accepted me as the first girl onto the Lancashire Academy. And then I need to say my brother as well because he, again, without him I wouldn't have had the opportunity to learn how to play the game from such a young age. And my uncle Bob as well, he was the under 11s coach down at Haywood, which is where I grew up playing cricket. And being the only girl, I was quite nervous going down, but I think having the familiar face of my uncle teaching me the skill as well, um, probably just embedded that family nature of the game into me from a young age. So yeah, those three. So I decided cricket was a career that I wanted to pursue quite late because we only turned professional in 2014. So as a youngster growing up, it was never a viable career option for girls. Um, so I went to university, did you know, my GCSEs, A-levels and then my uni degree with the view that I'd go into something and play cricket on the side and then we were very lucky in 2014 that the ECB said that we would go professional. So it wasn't until then that I knew that it'd be my career or could be a career but I always had the aspiration to play for England. I think from being that five-year-old in the back garden, being that nine-year-old playing with the boys in the under-11s, I always wanted to play at the top level. Um, so I always had the aspiration but it was only a career option when I turned 21. I still don't think I'm good enough to play at international level, which is crazy, but I think you always have those doubts as a sportswoman. Um, but I think when I was 15 and got accepted onto the Lanx Academy, that was probably the moment that I thought, you know, someone's taken a big risk here and they've done something that no one's ever done before by having a girl on the academy. And that was when I started to take it really seriously and put a lot more hours into training. But yeah, I think until you actually get your cap and get presented with it and go out and make your debut, I don't think anyone believes that they're good enough to play for their country. Um, so yeah, that was just probably something that I've had to work on as well to feel like I really belong when I'm out there. Wow, cricket has changed so much from when I started playing. Um, again, being that little girl in the back garden, being the only girl playing in a boys team all the way through to senior cricket. I mean, now there's girls clubs everywhere. I remember, I think my home, my closest women's team would have been in Sheffield. So my home games would have been an hour and 40 minutes away from me. And now I bet you could go 10 minutes down the road and find a girls team. So at grassroots level, there's so many more girls wanting to play international and professional level, the fact that there's now 40 odd girls professionally contracted in the UK is just phenomenal. Um, and I think the 100 probably embedded how much professional women's cricket has changed in England because having our domestic crowds recorded at 15,000, I think it was at Lords, you know, it's just incredible that people want to go and watch the game. Um, but yeah, the professional contracts have been a massive part of that because they've allowed girls to pick cricket from a young age. It doesn't have to be netball or swimming or gymnastics now. It can be sports which when I was a kid were seen as men's sports. Um, and hopefully we're changing that opinion as well. That it's not just, you know, it's a sport for everyone. And if you want to play cricket, anyone can play it. Um, so there's been so many changes, but they've all been in the right direction, which has been, I'm really proud to be a part of that actually. You know, I've been the first to do a lot of things. Um, and hopefully now girls coming through, that path will be a lot clearer for them. Um, and it'll be a lot easier for them to 
make that journey up to that England level. Yeah, I've had loads of setbacks. I've never been quiet about them either. I think that's part of the journey. I think anyone who's been, you know, the, the top level of their sport will have gone through some setbacks. Um, that I think the thing for me is that I always know that I've got more to give and that's something that's kept me going even when I've been in the darkest of places and thought I can't do it anymore. I've always just thought I've got a bit more in me and you know what if you didn't retire or what if you didn't pack in playing which trust me I've retired about 75 times in my own head um, but yeah I think you just have that inner motivation um, and for me as well my family have been a big part of my cricket journey and I've always wanted to do a lot of it for them because my mum and dad were the ones who drove me up and down the country when I was young. My, my brother put the hours in with me in the garden. My sister's been there for me all the time. So um, I think you've got external factors as well as the internal drive to want to be better. Um, and I think being in the generation of girls who are doing things for the first time, that's also quite inspiring for me as well because I know that if that inspires a young girl to pick up a bat or a ball, amazing. You know, we've done our jobs. Yeah, I have questioned whether cricket was the right choice because there was a lot of people telling you that you shouldn't do it because you're a girl, um, because, I don't know, you're not tall enough. You, there's just, there's been so many hurdles to overcome that you do question it and you wonder if you're doing the right thing. But then you see a young girl in the hundred, four years old, with a Manchester original shirt on, with cross 16 on the back, and any doubt that you ever had about playing cricket is just gone in that moment because you see the impact that you can have. And I still find that mind blowing that you know anyone would want to come and watch us play cricket or me play cricket. Um, but then I think back to being that young girl in the garden who only had male role models. I had a brother, a dad, an uncle who all played cricket. I had Andrew Flintoff on the TV because he was the only, it was only the men's England team that we saw playing cricket. So now to have women's domestic cricket, international cricket on, you know, free to air t television, I just think is so impactful and it's, it's making us visible. So yeah, all those doubts that I ever had would, were quickly gone as soon as I saw that little girl in the crowd. Uh, my role in the team is the fun one. Um, I think because I've had those setbacks, I've kind of learnt the value of cricket and I've gone back to that girl in the, in the garden who loved it so much and wanted to play it all the time. But I think that's because I had those setbacks. So now I almost feel, I've taken it upon myself, but I feel like my role is to remind people of that, that we all play sport because we love it. We all play sport because we're competitive, but mostly we play for each other. And that is what the England dressing room is like. We go out there and we fight till the death for each other. And so I try and remind people of that, but I also want them to have fun. Cricket is an amazing sport. It takes us to some amazing places in the world and you've got to enjoy that as well because you're a long time retired and everyone reminds me of that. So you've got to kind of embrace those moments while you can. I think having the responsibility of playing for England is a real privilege. And I know that's really cliche and a really like obvious answer, but not many people get to do it. And I remember when I signed my first professional contract, my dad said to me, because he used to play football professionally, but he said, if it was easy, everyone would do it. So I think having the opportunity to go out there, be visible, be that role model for the young girl or boys, I think it's just, it is a real privilege. And that's why I want to do it with a smile on my face, because I want people to know that cricket is fun. It's enjoyable, it's for everyone. So even though it, sometimes it can feel like you let people down if you don't perform well, you've also got to remember that you're still inspiring people to want to play our sport that we find amazing. Uh, personally, my hopes for the next 12 months are to stay fit so that I can get out on the park because that's the main thing. Um, but we've got an Ashes, we've got a 50 over World Cup, we've got a Commonwealth, um, which is the first, you know, first time cricket has ever been involved in that. So we've got a lot, again, a lot of firsts. Um, but I just, I want to enjoy it, first and foremost. I want to go out there and compete. Um, and obviously if we can come back with an Ashes and a World Cup, then we've had a pretty successful winter.